Hey guys, welcome to the second episode of the Solaris tutorial. Um, today we are going to try to obtain a first map that can be played. So, um, first of all, I made two shortcuts, uh, like you see. This one to run the game. So this is the first game, uh, the first quest created by the editor. I removed uh, what we did in the first episode. Okay, I'm gonna try to keep each episode um, independent as much as possible. And the second one is uh, the editor. So what you need to do is uh, a shortcut with as parameter of the quest editor the path to your quest so it's, it's hard to see but the target is... what? ok, I have a problem with the mouse so, Solarus quest editor Solarus editor and uh, with the parameter the path to your quest ok, between double quotes and if you do that, this open directly your quest. You don't have to lo uh, to make a quest load quest. Okay. Well, um, in this chapter, y we are gonna use the graphics and sound of Zelda: A Link to the Past. So, I made a. Uh, a resource pack just for you. Mm, I will, oops, I will put, I will put the link. Sorry, in the description of the video. Okay, so you can use Zelda graphics or um, other graphics, but of course, it's it's easier to <laughs> to use uh, graphics of an, an of existing games. So. As I'm not a very good pixel artist, we are going to use Zelda A Link to the Past graphics. Okay, in this repository you have um, some data, um, music, sounds, sprites, and tileset for A Link to the Past. All of these, of course, compatible with Solaris. Um, download zip. So you have to download that, and um, I already downloaded it because my internet is very slow. So you have to download this and um, copy everything under the dat data directory. Put it in your new quest. Okay, and now you have a, a new um, your quest with a lot of resources. If you open the editor, you have a lot of sp sprites from a link to the past. Uh, okay, when you open a sprite with Solaris uh, um, 1.2 or or below, um, there is no graphical editor yet. Uh, the graphical editor of sprites will be available in Solaris 1.3, the next version. Anyway, um, you have a lot of sprites here, in particular the sprites of the hero. So, if you want to see the images, sprites, hero, um, walking tunic. Okay, here is one of the sprite sheet one of the sprite sheets of the hero so it's a PNG file and this text file describes actually um, the the position of each frame in the sprite sheet and the parameters of the animation like the speed
Okay, and now that you have a valid hero sprite, you can play. The, uh, you can start a game in play. You also have some music, sounds. Um, you have all musics of A Link to the Past here, and a lot of sounds. Um, let's create a map. Chapter 2 will be the file name. Chap 2. Okay. And friendly name, uh, my first map. First map. Okay. This is what happens when you create a map. You, you can set the name again here, the size, um, some other properties. Um, and an important property is the tileset, light world. The tileset is the skin of the map. It is the list of tile patterns that can be used to create the map. And you can also set the music, so let's use the light world music overworld. Okay, we can already save our map. So this is the tile set. You can modify it by double clicking on its name here. You can also do that uh, with this icon here. You can modify your tile set, create uh, new patterns or change their properties and then get back to your map. Click on this button reload tile set to see the changes. So there are a lot of tiles in the light world. All sorts of all sorts of tiles. Tiles can have any size. For example this tree here is um, 32 by 32. Um, this flower or, or this grass is 16 by 16. The minimum size is 8 by 8, like maybe this one. And all sprites must have, um, I mean, the size of all tiles must be a multiple of 8 by 8. There are also animated tiles, like the flower here. It's a single tile, but it has three frames. You can uh, choose the animation properties of tiles here. Tiles also have, more importantly, uh, the ground, pop uh, ground property. This one is a full obstacle. They can be traversable and a lot of other things like water, hole, ice, etc. You can use the tileset editor here to create tiles and change their properties. We will do that in, a, in future um, future tutorials, but for now we will only use this existing tileset. Okay, so here is the first map. Let's pick some trees here. So you click on the tile you want to use. It appears under your uh, your cursor and you click again, left click, and the tile is placed. Okay. You can also place several times um, with a right, uh, right click, right click, right click, right click. Also, if you keep your mouse pressed, you can repeat the pattern and if you do that, this is only one tile. Simply, um, the size of that tile is several times um, the size of the tile pattern. Okay? So, this will be our first map. Okay, it is... <laughs> it is not pretty. 
let's uh, we are, we hello, wait if I run the game here nothing happens because um, my main script does not run a game so let's modify that main okay when the Solaris logo is finished um, let's play the game first um, we oh there is one more thing to use the game system you have to uncomment this line in in quest dot that right there and choose the name of the directory where save games will be stored mm. Solaris no tuto quest English because this is the English version of the tutorial save games are stored in your home directory then um, dot solaris then whatever name you have just put here mm. okay let's try to load the save game first does it exist there's a function sol.game.exist that takes a file name as parameter let's call it let's call it save one then we cr create a game um, actually we create the game it might maybe it already existed or maybe it will be a new game but if it is a new game so if not exists <laughs> then um, we have to initialize the save game for the first time and tell that we want to start in this map chap 2 if you read the documentation you can do that with game set starting location and the name the name of the map of the map file okay and in both cases you start the game and voila so it's not working maybe I, mean, I did something wrong do you know if we did something wrong um, there is this file error.txt which is created when there is a mistake in the in the script main lua line 24 attempt to call field create an ill value mm. Yes, it's not create, it's um, load. Of course, you you have to read the doc documentation. Yes, it's working. <laughs> so um, we have uh, the hero that can be moved by the player with the uh, hero's keys and the sprite is working correctly because it exists um, with the appropriate name like we saw um, there, there must be a tunic sprite, sword sprite, shield sprite etc. Several, sp several sprites just for the hero okay mm. also as you saw um, the map 
the hero was placed in the top left corner of the map initially because we we did not tell uh, exactly where we wanted to start on the on this map to do that you can use the uh, destination object and place the destination uh, where you want like here destinations are always used with teletransporters here um, to go from a map to another map. You give a name to the destination and on an another map um, you create a teletransporter and set the teletransporter to go on this map and on this destination of this map. Okay. But for the initial position of a save game just using a destination is enough. Of course, there is no teletransporter. If your map only has one destination, um, it will be used as the starting point of the save game. And if your map has several destinations, you can set one of them as the default one. Or you can also um, yes, or you can also add the destination name here as a second parameter. Start point. Okay, it's still working. Great. But you don't even have to set a name here. Just create a destination, set it as the default one if you have several destinations, and you won't even need the name. Oh, no, it won't work here because, yes, no such destination start point. Okay, like this. No name needed. You need a name only if you use teletransporters. So we will do that in in uh, another tutorial. Okay, um, I think this is enough for this one. I hope you uh, appreciated. Don't hesitate to ask questions. And see you next time. Bye bye.